Welcome back to Panzer Paladin. We're still going through Wiley Tower, and we still have a part left. Hey. I wonder. How yeah, this, this game, game gets a bit long is at the end. one of this game's only like gameplay flaws for me is that it's two levels too long. Like it's three levels too long. I think you could have done without one of these um, castle levels and probably two of the main levels. Probably could have been cut, and it would have made the game not drag as much. I mean, granted, I think that the levels are still fun. It's just that by the time you get to the end of the game, you are a little tired, and you... You kind of just want to be done. Yeah, because I feel with a linear setup like this, you're expected to beat it in one sitting. I think, yeah, I think that this is not really a one sitting game. It's more of a two sitting game, I think. If you were... I mean, it took me longer than that because I'm bad at video games, but... Like, you could probably beat this in about four or five hours on your first go, and do it in one. I yeah, I, I, mean, I, I mean, I recorded this I mean, I mean, recorded this in one sitting, so... Yeah, especially when you know the game. I guess it just depends well. on your tastes and what your gaming habits yeah. are like. Like, I, I'll play games generally in, like, straight up seven to eight hour bursts myself. Oh, I can't do that. Like, that's how I play everything from platformers to RPGs. Especially RPGs, because I never feel like I've made progress unless I unless I play for that long. But... It depends on the genre that I'm playing. Yeah. You see... Like, RPGs, I'll, RPGs I'll put maybe three hours before I take a break. And then I'll just keep playing for platformers and stuff, like, an hour and a half, two hours. Yeah, like, I feel like I can't play for more than, like, an hour or two of almost anything. Unless if it's something mindless. Um, I yeah, feel like but... I can't play for more than two hours before I'm tired and I need to do something like, else. Well, without like without without referencing like an ironically like a Hyrule Warrior session, to yeah, how long does that often? Go? Um, well, that that's the thing. It it depends. Like if I were just playing Hyrule Warriors like the story mode for fun on my own, I would probably be playing it like maybe two or three hours and then I'd be done. Uh, the, like, the thing about the memes was is that, uh, like, with me playing it to death and whatnot, all, a lot of that was because I wanted to, um, I wanted to 100% complete the game, and, um, because of that, uh, you know, I, it took a lot of time with grinding and whatnot, so... There's a weapon that's literally uh, an ice pick. Okay. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so I wasn't really paying attention while I played it. I was talking to my chat on Twitch, or I would do it when it became portable. I would do it while watching TV. And I can do it a lot more. I can play a lot longer when I'm doing stuff like that because I'm not just uh, I'm not just pl uh, playing the game. I'm doing something else, and so my brain isn't putting as much attention to on it, and I'm not getting tired that's, of it. That's the, the, that's the thing with me, is that I, I feel like I get the most enjoyment out of things when I'm, when I'm given a whole bunch of time all at once to focus on it without stopping. So it's not just my gaming habits. I, if I read a book, I'm pretty much reading that same book all day. If I watch an anime series, I'm pretty much watching that series episode by episode all day. When Netflix Daredevil first came out, I binged that shit non-stop until I got to the end of the season. That's pretty much just how I enjoy things. But... It is kind of a mentality I share with not just movies to be but games as well it's what it kind of fucks me in particular with my profession specifically because if i'm playing a game for a review specifically i have to be doing nothing else the rest of the day yeah, yeah you can't like play i something. can i cannot play for two hours and then do spend six seven hours doing everything else yeah because I, I i i feel i get very scatterbrained and then when i get back to it i was like i want to start <laughs> over because I, I forgot what i was doing the last time i was here that's why, for me, it's so important to have games that are just for me. Like, I, there are a lot of games that I absolutely will not play on stream or record for BSC until I've already played them once. Mm -hmm. uh, like, not even just once, like two or three times, because I specifically want to make sure that I enjoy it the first time I play, which means not feeling like I have to sit and keep on playing when I'm done and I will have more mm. fun playing on my own it, it might it might seem weird to say this though but because of my particular binging habits or my um apparent need to be able to focus on something 
entirely for pretty much an entire day. There are also days where I feel like I can't because I are because I know I have some other thing or obligation that I have to focus on later. Like, for example, if it's a day that I've decided I'm going to be streaming on Twitch, and I feel like I can't sit down and focus on another game during the downtime before that. Yeah. Um, so I... Which is... No, I, I get like that, too. <laughs> uh, I get like that, too, with a lot of things. You know, I, I equivocate it to the second shift problem with just regular 9 to 5 jobs, where uh, I don't have to go to work... I don't have to go to work today until 4 p.m. It's a 4 to 12 shift or 4 to 11. But because you know oh, you have yeah. work later. But I get up at 9 in the morning, and because I know I have to work later, I can't get anything done today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, oh god, that's the I worst. I mean, I mean, the worst, the worst shift I ever had was a, as a between second and third shift, Ooh. which you guys remember was during my particularly bad phase yeah. when, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was working from 8 p.m. to 4 a.m. Jesus Christ. Which was like, okay, so Split when I get... Not fun. Yeah, so it's like, at least if you're working from like 11 to 7 or 12 to 8, by the time you get out, things are open, so you can go do things. Yeah. Like get food and stuff. If you're getting out at 4 a.m., the only thing that's open is Waffle House. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, can get a McMuffin. So, it sounds so absurd. That, like, what are you, what are you talking about, John? It's like, you don't have to go to work till 4 o'clock. You wake up at 9 in the morning. That's like that's like six hours. You're it's not like, waking no, up like, at 9 in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, well that, yeah, there's precisely all chance that you're not working, you're not waking up at 9 in the morning because you know you don't have to go to work until 4. <laughs> but, like, it, it, every, t all, every, you know, the rest of the day before that, does, it might as well not exist. You, and you convince yourself that I can't get anything done. I can't do errands. I can't clean up the house. Yeah. No, because I got to work. Yeah, because it's hours. a mindset because for, for most of the world, you work and then you rest. You don't yes. rest and then you don't rest and then you work. Like it would make sense if you're doing a second shift to like four to eleven, right? That oh, you just do what you are going to do after work, before work. It's just like okay, yeah, that makes sense in theory, but in practice, what actually happens is that when you're done with work, you don't want to just go to bed. You wanna you wanna relax a little bit. You wanna watch something on TV, maybe play video games, maybe go on the internet some you don't want to just go to sleep and so you're not going to bed at 11 you're 11, going to bed at like 3 2 30 yeah. yeah and i mean granted yes that is something that's just like oh you could change your habits but it's that's easier said than done yeah it I ends think. up feeling like a psychological block yes it is it is a psychological block i think well it is what it is it's damn annoying though yeah. But yeah, so um like I guess the best the best advice I got though was was to just do something with that time even if it's not like super engaging. Like I start I went on walks before I had those kinds of shifts and it helped a lot because it's not like super in depth, but it is something you are doing with your day, and so you feel less miserable. You know what? I, you know what I started doing for a while when I was working at Amazon, and I had that issue. I got into the habit of playing everybody's golf a lot before shifts. <laughs> uh, Hot Shots Golf, for those of you who are more used to that franchise name, although they have just started calling it everybody's golf here too. I mean, they they should. The Europe's weird fascination with uh giving things different uh, oh no in our case it was us that got the different name oh okay. yeah we called it hot shots golf it was always it was called everybody's golf okay everywhere, well everywhere you, yeah all right i'm just so used yoshi's to yoshi's universal, like, universal gravitation yoshi's universal gravitation universal yeah. gravitation yeah that fucking <laughs> yoshi's universal i sure remember i found that image edit of someone taking other games and giving them weird european every goddamn ratchet and sometimes. clank game had to have a different name in europe <laughs> because of all the innuendos <laughs> If, so I if, remember it was, if it was Yoshi's the... Universal Gravitation, would it be uh, Kirby's Game Boy uh, tilting and <laughs> tilting and steering? No, they they did that for one of them. It was Kirby uh, Kirby and the Rainbow Curse was um, Kirby and the Rainbow Paintbrush in Europe for some reason. It's like why? Why is it Kirby and the Rainbow? Why can't it just? Why can't you just have this Nintendo? Of, I mean, I knew they'd have to, have to censor difficult? cursing, but I didn't know they'd have to censor the word curse. <laughs> but uh, 
Oh boy. Yeah, it was Rainbow Paintbrush. That's so weird. Yeah, hero. It is weird, yes. I wonder what the logic of that was. I mean, I don't uh, know. Europe is dumb. Well, I mean, <laughs> I mean, sorry. I mean, I we love our European viewers. We say that, but we're the ones who had to get sorcerers. But Stone okay, let me say that better. Stone. Europe of Nin Nintendo of Europe is is dumb. Yeah, yeah. Well, Philosopher's Stone is objectively less cool sounding than Sorcerer's Stone because sorcerers are people who do magic and shit, and philosophers are people who uh, sit in their college rooms waiting for someone to come to office hours, but they never do. Is that a giant you see, I saw crowbar? A crowbar. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes we're, gonna give him, we're gonna give him the Jason Todd okay. special. Hold on. So, okay. um, alright, I wasn't expecting that last one. Uh, I, I found this article about uh, gaming's strangest international title changes, like uh, some games radar. And uh, it goes to a couple of things like uh, Star Fox and the Lilat Wars and well, Star, Star uh, Fox Contra had to do with it. copyright and all that. So. Copyright thing, yeah. And Contra was Probotector because uh, I think it was the, that was censorship for the violence and all that. Yeah. Uh, TMNT was Teenage Mutant Min Hero Turtles. Turtles. We know that. Pac Man yeah. was Puck Man. Uh, Bully was Canis Canum Edit. It's Latin. Oh yeah, it's uh, some. It's some doggy dog. Yeah. yeah, it's some yeah. Latin phrase that's common as a school motto. Resident Evil was Biohazard, yeah. Uh, Mortal Kombat Deception was Mortal Kombat Mystification? Um, uh, I know that the, the Japanese name for Ratchet & Clank 3 is Ratchet & Clank Go Go Go. <laughs> Fatal Frame was Project Zero. <laughs> Bionic Commando in uh, Japan. Yeah. Is Hitler's Resurrection. I want to say secret. that both Fatal Frame and Resident Evil just have better titles over here than they did originally. Because, okay... Biohazard and Project Zero aren't exactly names that scream horror to me. <laughs> Most are we just gonna ignore the the really cool boss animation that's going on for this guy right uh, now? You mean, our, you mean our fighting death? Yeah. Well, no, Charon isn't really death. He's just death store man. He's the fairy man. Yeah. River sticks. Yeah. He's um, my favorite Charon in video games still has to be the Shin Megami Tensei 4 Charon, where. Whenever you die in that game, he's supposed to take it, you across the river, but he's too lazy to do it. So if you bribe him, he'll let you go back to the world of the living. And he even lets you do an IOU, which is really, really funny. <laughs> uh, uh, is it Charon or is it Charon? I don't know. Uh, I've always said uh, Charon. It's, it's Greek, so I'm gonna see. I'm gonna assume it's pronounced with a hard K. Yeah, hard K. So maybe it's maybe it's Charon. It's written as Charon. It's spelled Charon, yeah. Well, according yeah. to English rules, but it's not an English word, so... It's no. Hanukkah. You gotta put the H yeah. in it. Well, then they should <laughs> spell Han. it They should spell it the way it's supposed to be said I in agree. their language. Well, in that case... That doesn't always work out. If you want me to pronounce Cerberus as Cerberus, spell it with a fucking K. Until then, it's Cerberus. Eat my dick. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's my viewpoint, but more polite. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we have, we still like colloquially have words that aren't spelled the way they're supposed to be pronounced, but most. Oh yeah, because English sucks. Yes, we know, but um, like. All right. He, I mean, French uh, is. I mean, French isn't much better pop, in that regard. No, French is also. Bad. Well, yes, I was about to bring up the, the the um the example of herb, or as the British pronounce it, herb. Which is um, yeah. oh I know Herb he was the one of my mom's friends yeah uh, it, it's a case where the British think we changed it but it is in fact them who changed it after our language oh, like, broke like apart like most things because uh, <laughs> like uh, or like it, it's 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 from the French you know the H was silent but um, at some point after our language broke off from their version of English they started pronouncing the H but they think we're the ones who changed it a lot of the, a lot of the time. But, uh, yeah, no. because they're British, and so they can't be wrong about no, anything. They, cha what? they changed it after American English broke off from British English, so... Yeah. In this case, we're the ones who are right. <laughs> for once. I, so, I, I, I still remember in um, the Rugrats of Passover special, they have an argument about that. Uh, wow, oh, really? Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, because... Uh, cause, uh, Stu at one point goes, and so we take this bitter herb. It's like, I think it's supposed to be herb, is it? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> if you watch that, that's exactly how Passover satyrs go. Everyone's extremely bored and just wants to get to the eating. I think a lot of the Jewish jokes probably went over my head 
as a kid watching Rugrats because I didn't really I didn't really have a I didn't really know anybody Jewish until I was in high school. Dude, I didn't even know Jewish was a separate religion until I was in high school. That's how little it came up. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, thinking about British stuff again. So, you know how in like American culture, we just assume people with British accents are smarter most of the time? Is that like the case in like British media? Do they just give the person who's um, supposed to be dumb the American accent in order to make them sound dumb? No, they have their own kind of, haha, this person's a redneck, they're stupid accents over there. Well, yeah, I okay, mean, yeah, we say true. British accent as if there's only one British accent, but they have just as there's many. Like 12. They have just as many over there as we do over here. Yeah. Americans generally only acknowledge two British accents. There's the Queen's English, which is your fancy snooty snooty British accent. And then there's, and there's Cockney. Cockney. Uh, and that's, uh, thanks, uh, thanks, uh, crap. Uh, Mary Poppins, uh, Dick Van Dyke. Yeah. Dick Van Dyke, yeah. And then, I mean, again, I'm sure that to the to the to the people in the UK, they only know like Southern and then like New York are probably Whenever the only accents they recognize. Uh, well, it's funny that yeah, they say you know New York accent. And there's like three different New York. Well, accents. whenever someone says yeah. an American <laughs> accent, they usually are referring to what is it called, Midwestern, which is what. Uh, what we're saying th well, our accent. Well, sort, well, sort of. There's, there. What usually when people say American accents, what they think is mid-Atlantic stage English. Yeah. Which you'll which you'll hear most often in movies from the 40s and 50s. Right. It's a type of. It's a way of speaking that is not any particular accent, so it does not feel weird when you release a movie in the Midwest and New York and California and all that. Huh. Yeah. Which is why it sounds. I feel like to us, like oh, it feels they very don't still. It feels very accent. yeah. It feels very stilted by today's standards, but that's just how you did stage and things like that at the time. Yeah. Mm. It. Yeah, like if you think that somebody doesn't have a thick accent, it's very close to that mid-Atlantic. I think is what it's called. Oh, yeah. Not. Yeah, because Midwestern is more like oh, don't you know. Uh, oh, the, the, the bears. Well, what I mean is what we're speaking right now is generally considered the default American accent. Yeah. Is yes. there one? No, I mean, we slip into different things. Like, I know my Boston. Yeah. Well, my what Boston Boston yeah. slips it's, out from Ted occasionally slips into the, a Boston it's accent. The, um, it's, it's considered the default in the sense that when people try to think of a voice that has no accent, which is like saying a voice that has no sound, every voice has an accent, but we think of a voice that has no accent in American English, it's usually this one. So it's the one that people will uh, imitate if you tell them to imitate an American accent. I feel like they were either they would either do that or a Southern Texas type accent if you were to get someone not from. The because they're more the distinct. Yeah. Well, the, the, it yeah. also depends on where you're asking, because I think someone from more Asian countries would probably default more to the southern kind of thing, because it's just way more distinct than remember. Well, Whereas yeah, someone but, from the UK or but when France someone would but when someone hear, but when someone hears that accent, they think Southern American, Southern American. They don't yeah. they don't think just default American. They think that's specific regional accent. Um, it would yeah. be interesting to see, like, if we went to a Canadian and were like, hey, what uh, can you we'll do with we'll American we'll accent? We'll ask Clement. We're just, yeah, we know a Canadian is Clement. We know a few Canadians now. Um, yeah. There's uh, a... Ask Travis. There, there's a <laughs> good number... Of, Travis Canadian? There's a good number of Canadians that, I, that, that we know or know of online who just speak the same accent we do it's not exactly i did not know like... that i did not know that trav was canadian cause... i mean there's there's trav there's uh clement there's stefan i mean they're not exactly geographically far away from us so it makes sense um uh we i mean we, i mean we also know proton john so <laughs> yeah yeah, we're just gonna what break into his house in the middle of the night, do an American accent. What? <laughs> and then that he would, kicks that, us out of the house. That wouldn't be the weirdest thing he's done on stream. Ryan so. says we're friends, so it's canon now. Hey, uh, you know accents? <laughs> but what, what was the original point that brought us to this tangent? Oh yeah, just uh, that uh, people tend to think of one default accent for a culture, but there's a bunch of them, and the voice you think that you think of that has no accent is usually just the popular default accent. 
So, yeah. Hey, you want to know what would be better than one knife? If we took three knives and made it this one This feels knife. like a parody lightsaber. <laughs> um. <laughs> you know, I never really got... Uh, what? Who's his face? Red Turtle. Raph. That's that's his name. Yeah, like it's the, like all the these other turtles get really cool weapons, and like the Psy is a gardening tool. It's just like well, Splinter is teaching all of the other turtles all these things. It's like Michelangelo, you shall learn nunchucks. Uh, Donatello, well, you shall learn the in, uh, it, the, it, the it, stick. Yeah, stick Donatello. Yeah. In yeah, terms, you it, shall it, learn it's... katana. Raph, uh, duck here. Take this. <laughs> sure. The, the funny thing is that, that the size, the size are actually more practical in combat than the nunchucks are. You, They're oh, good yeah, carrying weapons. I mean, yeah. Yeah. The the nunchucks, I agree, are like impractical as AF. Like, no, like nun nunchucks are entirely for show, and they're not meant to be actually okay. used. Follow up to something I said earlier. Trav is not Canadian. He's Coloradian. Colo he's uh, he's he's further not, north, but he's not. It, it's up not there. that they're entirely for show, but they're not for practical fighting. They're more of a you get good at these things in order to sharpen your general skills kind of thing than they are for anything else. It's like, it, it's a thing you get good at for the athletic a accomplishment of getting good at it. Oh. Yeah, it's like doing archery. It's like, you're not doing this to actually like hit someone with a bow. You're doing it for the sport. Well, not anymore. Well, yeah, so. the archery yeah. started out as a practical combat yeah weapon. I'm, I'm talking about in today's well today's yeah but age. in, in uh, today's in today's case then all of them aren't practical anymore but um, oh yeah well i mean if you compare to a gun yes but they're like ninja turtles and they only have three fingers that are huge so i don't know if they could even use a gun <laughs> if they that is a good to. point <laughs> um have they had the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles use a gun before? Like, comment, and That subscribe. having been said, um, there is a certain... Uh, there is a certain feeling that comes to writing a story about a character who's using a weapon that was historically practical versus something absurd like nunchucks. Oh, I forgot that this is how they designed Beelzebub in this game. He's like As a an actual bee. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's, he's also an actual bee. Yeah. Um, oh, oh, he is a bee. Okay, that's somewhat clever. Then. Is he a bee? It looks like a fly. No, it, yeah, it looks more like a fly because he always has been Lord of the Flies. Yeah. But the the Grave Digger, I think, is a neat interpretation that I've never really seen before, because like the cor the correlation between flies and death is pretty strong. So. And plague. And disease. Yeah, I mean, I mean, this boss is pathetically easy. Yeah, no, this boss is easier than several of the the main stage bosses, and this is the second to last level of the game. Maybe it's a breather. Yeah, yeah I, I guess so. But I think we probably would have been better off just not having this level for a breather. Yeah. I mean, I mean, granted, I do believe that the difficulty Jason curve. Jason Todd special. <laughs> the difficulty curve shouldn't just be upward. You should have some levels in later stages that are easier than some levels in earlier stages, but it should be like that graph you see with the with like the the story small climax. Little, small and little dips. It not sure big took them bonus. a long time to get to the point where we could use a shovel as a sword, didn't it? Yeah. Hey, I mean, there were probably a lot of like revolutions and stuff where people actually used their shovel as a weapon because that oh was yeah, the only metal farming thing they tools had. were the peasants' weapon. They're really good self-defense objects, but um, I was I was going more for like finally a shovel knight reference in this very shovel knight like game. Yep. It's okay. He'll make a cameo appearance soon enough. We'll see you in the next part of Panzer Paladin.